All right, friends, welcome back to our online Bible study in the book of Deuteronomy. Today we're looking at the last two verses of chapter 21 and then all of 22. Um, but I'm not going to be addressing 22 here because I really want to hone in on these two verses in 21. Uh, you can get more on chapter 22 in the email. And also a lot of what we're talking about in these other videos and a lot of the emails really helps to understand uh, chapter 22 uh, as a whole. A lot of it, remember, read it through the lens of um, this is about how we're, we're forming a community that it's a recon all of this pushes us towards the recognition that, that what we do as individuals affects the community um, as, a, as a whole. So read it through that lens. I want to focus on these, these uh, last two verses of 21. If a man has committed a crime punishable by death, and we've seen that, that there are crimes that are punishable uh, by, by death for the Israelites under this covenant at this time, and he's put to death and you hang him on a tree, okay? But notice here that he's not being put to death by being hung on a tree, but what the practice was at the time, we see this in other ancient um, uh, uh, cultures also, is that after the death, the body was hung on a tree, likely meaning that it was impaled. So likely here the person is stoned to death, and then they are impaled and put on a tree. Why? Read a little bit further. His body shall not remain all night on the tree, but you shall bury him the same day. For a hanged man, person who's hung on the tree, is cursed by God. Hanging them, impaling them, was a symbolic way of showing that this person was cursed by God due to their actions, due to their sin, due to the things that they had done. They are cursed uh, by God, and therefore their body is put on the pole as a sign of that. But don't let their body stay there too long because you don't want to divide file your land that the Lord your God is giving you for an inheritance. There's been an understanding from the very beginning, go back to Genesis chapter 4, that what humans do affects the land in some way. Cain kills Abel, Abel's blood seeps down into the earth. Cain's sin not only affects Abel, it not only affects him, but in some ways it affects creation. This land of Israel, it is a holy land, a set apart land, and you don't want a cursed body just laying around. So you need to go through the burial ritual very quickly. Put it up there, show this person was cursed by God. It's a way of showing that what they had done in their lives doesn't congrue with, um, with what God wants. Do that, but then dispose of the body properly, uh, quickly. Obviously, friends, I, I'm trusting this is not the only video that you're watching. Um, we have to read all of this in its context. All of this seems brutal, but of course what we remember is that um, we don't compare this to our modern standards. If you do, then this seems ridiculously brutal. If you compare this to uh, other ancient practices, this seems ridiculously, um, the law was ridiculously merciful and, uh, and just. That's another conversation uh, for, for another time, but we just, we just have to, to remember that. So what does all of this say for us today? Well, you gotta remember, after his experience with Jesus, the Apostle Paul begins to read all of what we now call the Old Testament, what he would have just called the scriptures, begins to read all of that through the lens of Jesus. And at some point, he begins to reflect on this passage, this very passage. And what does it teach us about Jesus? Well, what does he say to the Galatians? He says in Galatians 3, verse 13, um, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree. So he remembers, okay, um, uh, it's different. Jesus was actually killed on the cross and then hung there. He's also buried that very day. Um, it, but but the, the same thing here, even though the, the execution uh, also happened on the cross, he hung there as a cursed man. He's the man on the tree. He's the cursed man. But of course, in Paul's mind, Paul sees, oh, okay, but um, but. He didn't do anything in his life to lead to him being cursed by God. He, he, he's the one righteous person. He's the one person who lived without sin. He's the cursed man on the tree, but he's not cursed because of his actions. So what is going on here? Well, in some way, that's it's, it's too deep for us to go into today. So in some ways, it, it bends my mind. In some way, Paul recognizes that by doing that, 
that he is breaking the curse for others. That he, though didn't, you know, he did not deserve to be the cursed man, chooses to be that that breaks us free. First the Jews, and then um, by extension, we non-Jews, we Gentiles. That he's the man on the cross. That really, frankly, we, we, um, we have earned the curse. That we have committed the sins that would, would, um, would rightly lead to us being the cursed man on the tree but he takes the place. See, Paul, when he has this experience with Jesus, he begins to read everything, including we call the Old Testament, what he just called the scriptures, through the lens of Jesus. And this is a pretty cool example of how he sees um, Deuteronomy differently on the heels of what he's learned about Jesus. It's a good day just to reflect on what are the sins that, um, that I need to repent of And, oh my gosh, how can I be gracious that even though I am sinful, that um, that God loves me and that God blesses me. That instead of being the one on the cross, to be the one on the tree, uh, it's Jesus. All right, friends, keep with your reading, and we'll see you next time.